Hi, my name is Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit channel. Today I'm going to show how to build this box joint jig. So let's get going. First of all, this is an attachment to my crosscut sled that I built for my table saw. I made a very detailed instructional video of the sled with all the dimensions so you can build one too if you'd like to add the box joint sled feature. Now I'm using half inch Baltic birch plywood to create the box joint addition. You'll need the following cuts and these are all listed in the description. You'll also need a 3 8 inch rod with 16 threads per inch that's 24 inches long as well as machine screws. In terms of hardware, you'll need pronged T-nuts, cap nut, washers, nuts and screws. Now, in order to build the jig, you will need a couple of additional parts. First of all, you will need a piece here. On my prototype model, I just used a piece of plywood, so you don't have to do anything fancy. However, I thought it would be nice with a round wheel. So I cut up these pieces on the X-carve which I glued together to make a thicker piece and I'll leave the SVG file in the description if you want to make it too. It came out really nice. I'm also going to need a spacer to connect to the rod. So I cut one up on the lathe which I drilled all the way through with a 3 8 inch bit. Totally it measures 4 inches long by about 1 inches in diameter. However you could make yours whatever size you want. Now I'm also going to need some knobs. Again, you see on my prototype here, I simply used two square pieces of plywood, which works well. But I decided to do something a little nicer. So I made a circle, drilled three quarter inch holes in the corners, and then cut out the circle in between on the bandsaw. Then I sanded, drilled a 3 8 inch hole all the way through, and hammered in the 5 16 inch pronged T-nut in the center of each knob. I read about this technique of making knobs in a woodworking magazine, but I can't remember where. It worked out great anyway. Next, I need a piece of hardwood to attach to the rod in the back. This is maple and measures 2x2x2.75 two by two by two inches. You could always glue together a few hardwood pieces to create this dimension. And then lastly, I'm going to need another piece to hold on to as you spin the rod. Again, on my prototype, I just used a piece of scrap wood. However, I thought it would be nice with a round, smooth handle, so I turned it on the lathe. Then I drilled a shallow hole and epoxied in this quarter 20 machine screw. And this one measured about two and a half inches long with one inches in diameter. And those were all the additional pieces. Now we're ready to assemble. First of all, let's remove the aluminum clamp bracket on the front fence. Next, we're going to take piece A, fit it in the center and screw it down, making sure to pre-drill ahead of time. Now let's get piece D in the hardwood block. First, let's place piece D next to the fence and push the block against it for spacing. Then bring the block up so it's level with the fence and then bring a pencil through the hole and mark the space on the block. That mark shows you where you need to drill through using a 3 8 inch bit. Then hammer in the 3 8 inch pronged T-nut. And this is what it will look like. Disregard the other hole next to it, I drilled wrong first. I also screwed two 3 quarter inch screws next to the nut to keep it in place. Once the block is prepared, place cut D in the center. Line up the block and screw the plywood to the hardwood, making sure everything is positioned right. Push the rod through the hole in the side fence, which we already drilled when making the sled. And then through the block and out through the other side fence. Now get the cap nut and a 3 8 inch washer, put it on the rod and screw in the nut. Now get a pair of pliers, hold the rod tight while tightening the cap. Then get another washer, put it on the other end put on the spacer, another washer, and a 3 8 inch nut. 
another washer, then put on the wheel, another washer, and then another 3 8 inch nut. To tighten this, hold the in-between nut with a pair of pliers and then tighten by hand on the end, and then tighten with a wrench. It is important that you are not tightening the entire rod here, you want to only secure the wheel in place. See, now the carriage moves when you turn the wheel. You want to make sure there is no slack from one end of the rod to the other. If there is, take that part off, push this nut down a bit further and tighten again. You want to make sure that the wheel is good and tight in between those two nuts, because over time as you spin this, it can loosen. Now let's get the handle. Put on a quarter inch washer. Put the screw attached to the handle through the hole in the wheel. Add another washer. And then screw on two one quarter inch nuts. Now one nut acts as a stopper to the other. So you want to hold the one closest to the wheel and tighten the other one with a wrench. This will determine how tight the handle goes on the wheel. And you don't want the handle on the wheel too, too tight. You want to be able to spin it. Now let's spin the carriage all the way back. Let's get piece E and rest it on the fence and piece D, which is screwed into the block. Make sure to position it right and screw down on piece D, making sure to pre-drill ahead of time. To prepare piece C, You'll need to drill two 5 16 inch holes in the middle, about 1.5 inches from each side. Also, chisel out enough space to fit the head of the 5 16 inch screws. This is how this will work. You'll insert the screws, make sure they fit flush, then position the board in between piece A and piece E. Now you can continue securing piece E on top and screw it down. Now let's prepare piece B. Drill two 5 16 inch holes, each one and an eighth inch from the long side and one and a half inches from the short side. Then slip it onto the carriage, making sure to have the right side up and, and you'll notice if it's not right because it won't fit right. And then thread on the knobs. As you turn the wheel now, the whole carriage will move along with it. To finish the jig, I'm putting some wax polish on the hardwood and on the rods. I'm also going to finish the new plywood pieces with wipe on poly to protect them from the elements. Now what's really awesome about this jig is the fact that you can create any size box joint you want. You just have to adjust how you use it. Let's start with the simplest joint, which is an eighth of an inch. First of all, make sure the carriage is positioned to the left. Also, make sure the handle is positioned up. This will be your reference point when you spin later. If you want to cut two pieces of wood that fit flush into each other, then you need to space them out evenly. I found that it's a lot easier to create a spacer for each sized joint. Actually, for the 8th inch joint, I have a spacer that measures 3 30 seconds. That's because that's the thickness of the blade. I know it sounds a little confusing, but that's because it's not literally an eighth of an inch joint. It's actually a 3 32nd inch joint, since that's the width of the blade. Now, if your blade is 1 eighth of an inch, then you should make the spacer that distance. You could also measure out the distance, 3 32nds, or the width of your blade, and make a mark if you don't have a spacer, and line up your pieces from there. So set up the pieces with a spacer, or your measure, Tighten the knobs and then remove the spacer. Now for an eighth of an inch joint, you need to cut once and then spin three times. Cut again and then spin three times and so on. You can actually stack several pieces of wood and cut them all at once, especially when you're cutting thin pieces of wood like this. When you're done, loosen the knobs and check if they fit, which they should if you had them placed correctly in the first place, if you counted correctly, and you made sure the handle was always in the up position after each spin or cut. Let's move on to the quarter inch joint. So for a quarter inch joint, the offset needs to be a quarter inches in order for it to be right. So again, either mark out on the piece or make a spacer that you can reuse. Then arrange correctly and start cutting. For a quarter inch joint, the pattern is this. Cut four times with a spin in between each cut to move it forward, then spin six times. Then cut four times, spin six times, and so forth. Thank you. 
Now for the half inch joint. Again, make sure the handle is pointing upwards. Also, this is true for each joint. Make sure the height of the blade is just a touch above the thickness of the wood you're cutting. For a half inch joint, I have a spacer measuring half an inch. So setting up the wood with the spacer. And here you can see that you need to place the wood just before the cutting mark here. If this is a little off, you won't have as tight a fit. Then remove the spacer and tighten. Now half an inch is a little different in the sense that you need to start counting your first cut on two. So you do your first cut and count that as two initially. So the pattern here is eight cuts, 10 spins. Eight cuts, 10 spins. Only the initial cut is counted as two. So right off the bat, it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then spin 10 times and then cut again starting on one, two, three, four, and so forth. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little confusing. However, once you get the numbers right for each type of joint, they're really easy to do. You just have to figure out the pattern and stay on top of your counting. I usually count out loud to keep track. Of course, you could also create new patterns and be really creative, do any sizes that you want. So that's pretty cool. Now, this jig is meant to be taken off the crosscut sled. It's pretty easy to remove and put back on again, so you can use the sled to make crosscuts when you're not cutting box joints. Also, these measurements are all based on imperial and very much related to the size of the rod you use. You could certainly do this in metric, however, the spinning would be a little different depending on the size of the rod, so you would have to work those numbers out. I just want to say that this jig is really easy for anyone to use. You don't need any technical expertise. So far for me, it's been very safe. However, you should always be careful with your table saw. I really like that you don't need many parts. It's not a complicated build. It's pretty easy and it's very useful. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning about how to build uh, this jig. Uh, now, if you had built my crosscut sled ahead of time, then you can just follow my exact specifications to uh, get this exact uh, model. Otherwise, you can use the same concept and adapt them to your sled. Uh, now, I'm not selling these plants or anything. I'm, uh, so if you uh, make one, please share and uh, let me know how it works for you. Also, if you make any modifications, I would love to hear about it, if you improve it or change anything. Um, otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time here, since I put out uh, project videos every week. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. Bye! And don't forget to check out my channel on Patreon, where I put out exclusive Patreon-only vlogs each Friday. If you'd like to support my channel, Patreon is a great way to do so. Thanks for watching, and make sure to check the YouTube description for more information about this project. See you soon!